Hello everyone, this is Brendan Raymond. Uh, I'm doing something a little bit different today. I'm doing a Commander deck tech, uh, deck breakdown. Um, for those who don't know, um, Commander is a way of playing MTG Magic the Gathering, which is a uh, collectible card game, um, but I'm not going to go into explaining too much how Commander works. Um, I'm just going to assume that um, people watching this video are familiar with Commander and with uh, Magic the Gathering. Um, so the Commander I'm going to be looking at today is one of mine. It is Karametra, God of Harvests. I have a number of different Commander decks. This is probably one of my favourites. Um, it's the second deck that I built. Um, so this one, let's see if I can get it at a better angle. There we go. Um, so Karametra God of Harvests is part of the God Cycle from Theros. They did uh, one in each of the mono colours as well as one in each of the um, dual colours. Um, there haven't been any triple colour gods as yet, but perhaps with the recent announcement that we are going back to Theros next year, which is very exciting. We may see some triple colour gods, which would be really interesting. Um, Makara Metro, God of Harvest, is a green-white commander. She costs 5 mana in total, 3 generic, and 1 green and 1 white for a legendary enchantment creature god. She is a 6-7 indestructible, um, which is very nice. means that she is not frequently removed, um, which is great. Um, as long as your devotion to green and white is less than 7, Karamantra isn't a creature, so that means that she's only an enchantment at that time, um, and so anything that refers to creatures in terms of targeting, whether that be removal or a pump spell or whatever it might be, cannot target her at that time, um, but it also means, of course, that she cannot attack or block or anything like that, but the next lines of text do still work, her effect does still work when she is just an enchantment. Um, but when she is a creature and you do have that devotion, and just a reminder if you don't know, the devotion to a particular colour is the number of pips of that colour. So these little symbols here in the converted mana cost, the number of those symbols you have of those colours. So whether that's 7 green, 7 white, or a mix of green and white that adds up to 7 or more, your devotion is that amount. Um, and then her next bit of text says, whenever you cast a creature spell, importantly, the trigger is on the cast, not on the edge of the battlefield. And that will come up with a couple of the creatures that we do have with landfall, which is a nice little synergy. Um, but whenever you cast a creature spell, um, which also means that it, it will happen even if the spell does get counted, um, you may search your library for a forest or plains card put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your library. So importantly, it does not say basic forest or plains, it just says forest or plains, um, which means that you can get um, those non-basic forests and plains that, that still have that type line, um, that, that subtype, or that, um, that type of land, um, but are non-basic, which is very handy. I don't have many of them in this deck because they do tend to be a little bit more expensive, um, and I am, I do try to, uh, to keep um, to a reasonable budget um, with my decks. So I generally say uh, no cards above around the five dollar mark in general. Um, sometimes there are a couple that are a little bit more expensive. Though often they're a little bit cheaper if they are um, pre-used and stuff like that, which is nice. So in this deck, um, I actually run a. a slightly lower land count than most may. Um, so my mana count, I believe, is I have 18 uh, basic lands, so 10 green and 8 white, so 10 forests and, 10, and 8 plains, and then 15 non-basics, and I'll take you through those in a moment, um, which is a grand total of 32, which is lower than most people would do. Most people would tend to go for somewhere around 36. Um, but of course, with Karametra, as soon as you get her out, whenever you play a creature, you are getting land. So, as, so the magic number is five. So as soon as you can get to five, as long as you can get to five mana, um, 
and cast Karen Metra, you can you uh, you have no issues with mana at all. Um, but it's the trick of getting to five. So as soon as you can get there, you are all good for the game, pretty much, as long as she doesn't get removed too much. Um, so the lands that I'm running, I said I've got 18 basics. He, he's, here's the non-basics that I've got. So we've got Selesnia Sanctuary, um, which comes into play tab to when it comes into play, you can bounce a land you control to its owner's hand. Importantly, it doesn't say that uh, tapped land, um, so you can... Uh, sorry, it doesn't say untapped land, so you may tap the land previously to bouncing it for the mana um, so that you don't lose that um, and then you tap to add green white to your mana pool so it taps for two mana comes into play tapped and you have to return a land you control to your hand um, but if you have lands with etb abilities like gaining one life or scrying that uh, can actually be quite good um, then i've just got the grasslands which is the one that also enters the play tab, but you just tap and sacrifice it to get either a, a forest or plains. Again, it does not say basic, which is nice. Um, I have Gavney Township. Um, so this deck is a plus one, plus one counters deck. Um, you may have seen um, other people run it as an enchantress style deck, um, but I'm doing it with plus one, plus one counters and lots of creatures. Um, so Gavney Township, Either taps for a colourless, or for two, a green and a white, and tap it. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Um, so you're going to see that ability, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control, come up quite a bit in this deck. Um, I've got quite a lot of um, creatures that do that, um, spells that do that, um, to get plus one, plus one counters on all my creatures. Um, and then other ways to get value out of that. I also have Cross and Verge, so it comes into play tapped. Um, you can tap to add one colorless mana to your mana pool, or you can pay two, tap and sacrifice it, to search a library for a forest and a plains, put them both on, into play tapped, and then shuffle your library. Um, so again, that's getting you some more lands into play. Um, Oran Reef, the Vastwood, is a really nice one. Um, you can just tap for green, straight up. Um, it does enter the battlefield tap, so it is a bit slow. Um, but you can also tap it and put a plus one, plus one counter on each green creature that entered the battlefield tone this turn. Not target creature, each green creature. So that can be very powerful um, at the right time. Um, Fortified Village is one of the reveal lands. So when it enters the battlefield, you may reveal a forest or plains card from your hand. If you don't, it ends the battlefield tapped, um, and it taps for green or white, um, so that's a handy one to have. Um, I've got Bant Pan Panorama in here. Um, I know some people are a little bit unsure on the ones that do reference um, the land types that are not in your deck, but I think this is fine. So it taps for a colorless, or you can pay one, tap and sacrifice it, to search your library for a basic forest, plains, or island card and put it into play tapped. Obviously, you're only searching for a forest or plains um, and shuffle your library. I have Jungle Basin. So it comes into play tapped. And again, you have to uh, return. This one does say an untapped forest. Um, or just, this would just go to the graveyard. And it taps for green and colorless. Um, I just have the plain old Selesnia Guild Gate. I don't have anything that um, cares about gates in the deck, but I am still running the Selesnia Guild Gate. Um, I've got the Karoo, so from the other Karoo land, that was the Jungle Ruins there. Uh, sorry, Jungle Basin. Um, so this is the other, the white version of that. It comes in play tapped, return a untapped planes you control, um, and then it taps for a white and one colorless. And I've got um, Sun Petal Grove, which enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a forest or a plains, which you usually will unless you're playing this turn one, which hopefully you aren't, um, but you may need to. And it taps for green or a white. And then Canopy Vista, so this is the only non basic I have that is a forest or a plains as you need it. Um, does enter the battlefield tapped unless you control two or more basic lands, um, which you often will if you're playing it later 
um, even like turn three or four, you, you should usually have it entering untapped. Now, in this deck, I do have um, eight cards that are proxies. So for those of you that don't know, proxies are cards that are not real cards. So this is an example of a proxy. It looks like a real card, but in actual fact, it is just paper that is over a, a RAM token that I have. Um, and that's because these are more expensive cards that I'm essentially not willing to buy because of the amount of money that they do cost. Um, I have other newer decks that don't have proxies in them. This one still has a few. I think I have one other deck that still has a few. Um, the deck can run fine without these cards, so if need be I can um, swap out other cards for them if the people that I'm playing with aren't comfortable with me playing proxies. Um, none of these cards are really going to win me the game by themselves. Um, there's a couple that are quite strong, um, but they're not the strongest cards in the deck, arguably. Um, but anyway, um, I'm not going to get into a discussion around whether proxies are good or bad or anything like that. Anyway, what we have here is Nykthos Shrine to Nyx. So this is a legendary land. Um, so normally you can just tap it for one, but you can also pay two, tap it, choose a color, then add to your mana pool an amount of mana of that color equal to your devotion to that color. Um, so late game, and particularly when you've got a big board state, which this deck can easily get, um, that can start tapping for a lot of mana. Um, this is the Shockland for Green White Temple Garden. Um, the Shocklands are quite expensive. Um, I could probably just swap this out for um, a simpler jewel. I haven't, um, oh, I haven't touched this deck for quite quite a while, so I could probably swap a lot of these these proxies out for other cards. Um, I also have the Fetch in the colours, so the one. That, you pay one life, sacrifice, and search for a forest or plains card. It doesn't enter um, and put it onto the battlefield. It doesn't enter tapped. This land itself doesn't enter tapped. It's quite nice. Um, but yes, that's what I've got at the moment. And I've got some other proxies as well, that, um, the, but they aren't lands. So I might go through those first, actually, just quickly. Um, so... Let's see, we've got Creature, Creature, two Planeswalkers, and an Enchantment. So I'll talk about our creatures. First, I've got Nylea, God of the Hunt. She's really nice. Three and a green for a 6-6 six, six Legendary Enchantment Creature God. Again, indestructible, as all the Theros Guards are. Um, and this time, as long as your Devotion to Green is less than five, uh, Nylea isn't a creature. Other creatures you control have Trample, which is very nice. Um, you can also pay, what is it, three in a green, and tug creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Most of the time I'm not using that ability. I can't actually remember when I have used that ability, but it can be useful in a pinch. Um, then we have here Archangel of Thune, um, which is quite a powerful card in the right, right deck. Um, Archangel of Thune is three white white for a three four angel with flying and lifelink and it says whenever you gain life put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control so again that's that that line of put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control and there's just some incidental life gain in this deck here and there um, that you'll spot so it's not happening super frequently um, but it is happening now and then and so that that ability can be quite powerful um, I do also have primal vigor which is the fixed version of doubling season. Um, <laughs> so it's um, four and a green, four and enchantment, and it says, oh, goodness, I can't even read that there. Hang on, I might just turn around so I can read it. If one or more tokens would be put onto the battlefield twice that many of those tokens are put onto the battlefield instead, this deck doesn't really play with tokens, so that's not particularly relevant. But it does say if one or more plus one plus one counters would be placed on a creature, twice that many plus one plus one counters are placed on that creature instead. Um, so of course very powerful when you're dealing with a lot of plus one plus one counters. Doubling season, of course, for those of 
you that aren't familiar with it doubles any kind of counter, not just plus one plus one counters, um, which is why that card is extremely powerful and also extremely expensive. Um, here we have Ajani Goldmain. So this deck actually started off as the Ajani deck, and so I have a number of Ajani Planeswalkers in this deck, including the original Ajani Goldmain. So two white white for a four loyalty planeswalker. His plus one ability is you gain two life, which is fine. His minus one ability is put plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. So that's very powerful, and you can usually, um, with this deck, it usually has um, enough of a board state to be able to defend a journey fairly well. And so you can usually get that happening a couple of times. Um, but his ultimate, minus six, if you can get him there, put a white avatar creature token into play with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to your life total. Um, I believe that's the Sarah avatar ability, if I can remember rightly. I've been able to do that once or twice. Um, once it got removed straight away, and so it was somewhat amusing. Um, but it, it can be quite good. Um, and then I also have a Johnny Steadfast here. Three and a white for an Ajani Planeswalker with, again, four loyalty. Um, plus one until the end of turn, up to one tug creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains first strike, vigilance, and lifelink, which is quite nice. Is minus two, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control, and a loyalty counter on each other Planeswalker you control which is again quite good. There are a few, a handful of, of Planeswalkers in this deck, um, mostly Ajani's, um, so that, that can be relevant. And then his minus seven, which generally speaking you aren't getting to, you get an emblem with if a source would deal damage to you or a Planeswalker you control, prevent at least at all but one of that damage. Um, again, I, I've, I've never gotten into that ultimate. Um, I don't think that Ajani has lived for very long, usually but that is okay. So, now let's get into the meat and potatoes of this deck. I have this pile of cards here. So this is all our non-lands and our non-proxies. Um, I have shuffled this pile, so I have no idea what order they are going to come out in, so it's not in any particular order. So let's see what we have off the top. We have Ulvenwald Observer. So this is four green and a green. For a creature, Tree Folk, he is a 6-6. Six, six. He's pretty big. Um, whenever a creature you control with toughness 4 or greater dies, draw a card. Um, so this guy, basically what he's about is making sure that you don't get blown out. Um, because um, this deck is often trying to get a, quite a big board state. Um, but then if those, and then getting synergy out of that, and so, but then if those creatures are removed, then for, whether it's from a board wipe or targeted removal, then that synergy can be lost, um, and it takes a while for you to get back into it, unless you've got this sort of thing happening. So each time you've got those creatures dying, you're drawing now drawing cards, and often, and in green white, it can be quite difficult to get that card draw happening so this sort of thing is really helpful so I do have a, a couple of effects like this in the deck um, and with the plus one plus one counters that toughness four or greater is quite easy to get to um, and next one here is almost as good as the Nykthos Shrine's next it's Karametra's Acolyte so for three and a green she's a one four human druid creature and she taps Add an amount of green to your mana pool equal to your devotion to green. Um, so you don't even pay, have to pay two to activate this. You have to pay four, obviously, to put her onto the battlefield initially. Um, but this can just be crazy in the amount of mana that she's giving you each turn. She can ramp you really, really well, particularly if you get into the later game. She can just be really, really good. Um, Karamatra's Acolyte, definitely a really good include. Um, for most decks that have green in them, particularly if they're um, heavily creature-based, which most green decks are. Here we have Sen's Tactician. So it's not a spectacular one, but you need some early 
early creatures. So this is a one drop, one white for a one one Kithkin soldier. And you can just pay one white, tap, put a plus one plus one counter on target soldier creature. Now I don't have heaps of soldiers in this deck. I think I might have a couple of incidental ones. I didn't try to specifically include them. Um, but you can also just um, target herself with that. So it's quite handy. And each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it can block an additional creature. So you're going to see this sort of templating quite a bit here where it says each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it, but but up but up. You're going to see that quite a bit in this deck. And this one's also a nice foil, which I try to get um, the foils if they're not too much more expensive than the normal cards. If they're just a few cents more expensive, I'll usually get pick up the foils. Um, oh, here's a nice one. So Primeval Protector. He's a massive one. 10 and a green for a creature avatar. He's a 10-10, but he costs one less to cast for each creature your opponents control. So, in the best case scenario, you are playing this one for one green mana, which definitely has happened before. And when he enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature you control. So he doesn't come in with a plus one plus one counter, but he gives one to each other creature, which is pretty good. Um, he doesn't have any sort of evasion or anything, he's just a big beater, um, but he can be quite good. Here we have Ridge Scale Tusker, three green green, a creature beast, I have a number of beasts in this deck. He's a 5-5. Five five. And when he enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature you control. He's just solid. Five five for five, putting a plus one plus one counters on white creatures. Thank you very much. Okay, here we have, ah, yes, Abzan Falconer. Two and a white for a two three human soldier. Now this one has the Outlast ability. Now I've got a few in this deck that have the Outlast ability. So how the Outlast ability works is for this one, the, the payment cost is one white, but it varies from creature to creature. But how it works is you pay one white, you tap, you'll put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature, and you outlast only as a sorcery. Obviously, because it does have tap as part of it, you can't do it. Your turn, it comes out, unless that creature happens to have haste in some way. And then it also says, each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has flying. So this card can make the game pretty crazy when suddenly all your board now has flying. Um, so that creature, um, you know, by itself, it doesn't do much, but with a big board, that card gets very, very crazy very, very quickly. Nissa, Voice of Zendikar. One green, green. I think I've got a couple of Nissas in here. So Planeswalker Nissa. Um, three loyalty when it comes in, plus one, plus zero, one green plant creature token onto the battlefield, minus two, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control, that's the real one that you want it to be doing, and then minus seven, which you're almost never going to be able to do, you gain X life and draw X cards, where X is the number of lands you control, so really, again, she's there for the plus one, plus one counters, though, who knows, you might get a couple of plants out of her as well. Oh, this card. This card should be going in more green decks, I tell you right now. Tireless Tracker, two in a green for a 3-2 human scout. And whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, investigate. So the investigate mechanic is back from Innistrad block, I believe. And basically what it says is you create a colorless clue artifact token. You put it onto the battlefield with, and that clue basically says you pay two, you sacrifice it, and you draw a card. So it's basically, at any time, you can pay two and, and draw a card for each clue that you have. But then he has another thing that says, whenever you sacrifice a clue, put a plus one, plus one counter on Tireless Tracker. So this card can get pretty, pretty good. So basically, Landfall, make a clue. Um, landfall, of course, being whenever land, when a land enters the battlefield under your control, something happens. Um, so Landfall, make a clue. And then whenever you sacrifice a clue, he gets a plus one, plus one counter. That's just a really strong green card. Really good in the deck. Okay, we have here Step Glider. Is four and a white for a creature elemental. I do love elementals. Um, elementals was my first deck. Um, it's a two, four flying vigilance. And one for one and a white, target creature with a plus one, plus one counter on it gains flying and vigilance 
until end of turn. Now there's no tap in that ability, so if you have the mana for it, you can, you know, obviously do a lot of target creatures with that ability. Um, and it's a decently costed creature as well, so that one is quite nice. Here we have Pacification Array. Um, this is one that I'm a little unsure about, but it's a nice early turn, uh, um, early game one. So it only costs one mana. It's one mana artifact. And it's fairly simple. It just says pay two, tap, tap target artifact or creature. Um, and so this this is, is quite handy for just keeping you alive that little bit longer when you need it to. Just tapping down that big creature that would be swinging in for that extra damage or tapping down that artifact um, so that they can't activate it or whatever it may be um, that that just has a lot of utility um, I found it to be quite helpful now and then um, but it doesn't have any specific synergy with the deck as such okay here we have Armorcraft Judge it's three and a green for a three three elf artificer. It says when Armorcraft Judge enters the battlefield, draw a card for each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it. Now this is this is pretty crazy for the mana that you're putting into it. So it's four mana three three. And so three mana three three is your center courser. So this is one extra mana. And for that one extra mana. You are drawing a card for each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it. Even if you control only one creature, that is one mana draw a card, which is crazy. Um, but often in this deck, you are having a lot more creatures than that. So often two, three, four, even more, which is a, can be a lot of cards at the right time with that creature. Oh, Authority of Consoles, just such a great card. One white mana for an enchantment. Creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped, and whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you gain one life. So there's some of that incidental life gain that I was talking about. Just keeps you alive that little bit longer, um, and just slows down your opponent's game plan. This is really lovely in an opening hand. Just helps so much. Um, can be can be really great. Again, no specific synergy with the deck, but just a really nice card that works quite well. Ah, this is. A more recent addition to the deck, Shalai, Voice of Plenty. She is three and a white for a three-four legendary creature angel with that nice new legendary frame there. She has flying, of course, as an angel, and she also says you, planeswalkers you control, and other creatures you control have hexproof, which matters. Yeah, that 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 matters matters a lot. Um, but she also has the line for green green. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Now, that's a lot more than I'd usually want to be paying for that ability, but it is, it is handy to have there as something that you can just soak mana to, into if you've got the spare mana there. Um, and giving basically everything you have plain, have Hexproof is pretty amazing. So it just means that they have to remove her before they can remove anything else if they want to target things specifically at least. Next we have Elite Scale Guard. So this is four and a white for a two three human soldier. And when it enters the battlefield, bolster two. So how bolster works is you choose a creature with the least toughness among creatures you control, which may in fact be Elite Scale Guard, you never know. And you put two plus one plus one counters on it. Um, so this is just quite handy. And then it says whenever your creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it attacks, tap target creature defending player controls. And the way it's worded is whenever a creature, not whenever one or more creatures, whenever a creature. So if you have three creatures with plus one plus one counters on them attacking, you are tapping down three creatures that the defending player controls. So this can be a very good card at the right time. And next card is Inspiring Call. This is two and a green. It just says, it's an instant, it says draw a card for each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it. Those creatures gain indestructible until end of turn. Um, so this can be a great response to a board wipe if you have it at the right time. Um, or it can ju just be a great card draw engine. It um, so it's great in a few different circumstances and it's just 
goes really well with the deck. Our next one is return retreat to Kazandu. So remember that our commander is fetching out lands quite regularly whenever we play our creatures. This one is two and a green for enchantment, has the landfall ability. So getting out those lands each turn, plus the lands that we happen to just pick up off the deck, is going to be triggering this. And says whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. Either put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, yes please, or you gain two life. Now, pretty much every single time you're going to be choosing that first ability, but that, again, incidental life gain can be helpful as well. But yeah, that, that landfall trigger is just pretty great. Um, yeah, you expected this one, didn't you? Cathar's Crusade, three white white enchantment, you know what this does. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. This is just crazy. Um, if this stays around for more than a couple of turns, you're winning the game. If 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 they if there's not a board wipe happening, um, yeah, that that just gets crazy. Um, <laughs> that, that that card just gets really really crazy very very quickly. Um, particularly late game. Here we have Juniper Order Ranger. So this is three green and a white for a two four human knight creature. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your, under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on that creature, and a plus one plus one counter on Juniper Water Ranger. So this is really nice. It just ensures that every time you're playing a creature, it gets a plus one plus one counter straight away, which means it's getting all those synergies from those other cards that are giving it flying, that are giving it vigilance, that are giving it trample, whatever it may be. It's just really nice um, to have that. Here we have another Planeswalker, Garrick, um, which was recently announced is also in the new Throne of Eldrain, which is I'm really looking forward to, by the way. Um, this is four green green for a four loyalty Planeswalker, Garrick. His plus one, reveal the top five cards of your library, put all creature cards revealed this way into your hand, and the rest on to the bottom of your library in any order. His minus three, you may put a green creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. And it's minus seven, which you're generally not getting to. You get an emblem with whenever you cast a creature spell, you may search your library for a creature card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So what Garrick is really about is either finding you more creatures if you don't have them in your hand at the moment, because you really want to be casting creatures every single turn with this deck, um, or getting you out a creature for cheap that is quite expensive for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, he's, he's a solid include in this deck. Quite helpful. Here we have a nice one, Collective Effort. So this is a sorcery. It's one white white, and it has Escalate. So this is a flexible card, which is really nice. Um, it's, so Escalate, tap an untapped creature you control. Pay this cost for each mode chosen beyond the first. So basically you can just do one thing for one one white white or if you want to do more than one thing for each thing more than one that you choose you have to tap an untapped creature you control which is usually pretty easy in this deck so choose one or more destroy target creature with power four or greater destroy target enchantment put a plus one plus one counter on each creature target player controls so for three mana and tapping two of your creatures you can get rid of a creature that's really annoying to you you can put a plus one plus one counter on all your creatures, and you can get rid of a good enchantment that someone has. So that's just a really good flexible card that is good in a lot of situations. Ah, here we have Heroic Intervention. You probably know this one as well. One and a green, for instant, permanents you control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. This is just really good protection from a lot of stuff that people are going to throw your way. Um, it's just really nice and really good in pretty much any green deck. Um, okay, here we have a nice one. We do have Hydras in this deck. So Colonian Hydra, three green and a green for a zero zero Hydra. It's not gonna say zero zero for long. It has Trample. It enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on it. So it enters as a four four for five. So five five, so five mana for a four four Trample. But whenever it attacks, you double the number of plus one counters, not just on it, but on each creature 
you control each creature. If yeah, if again, this one like Cathar's Crusade, if it is out for more than one attack, really, it the, the game is yours. It just goes crazy very, 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 very quickly. Um, yeah, that 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 card is just insane. Oh, and I must not have shuffled well because here's another Hydra straight off the bat. Here's a Vastwood Hydra. X green green. Again, a zero zero. It's a creature Hydra. It enters the battlefield with X plus and plus one counters into it on it. So this is good late game for a mana sink. Um, and when it dies, you may distribute a number of plus one plus one counters equal to the number of plus one plus one counters on Vastwood Hydra among any number of creatures you control. So that's just really um, some nice synergy there. You can it means that you're not losing those counters when that creature dies. You can distribute them among your other creatures. That's just really handy. Okay, our next one is Citadel Siege. This is one from Khan's Block. Um, so two white, white for an enchantment. As it enters the battlefield, choose Khan's or Dragon's. Choose Khan's. Khan's says, at the beginning of combat on your turn, put two plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. Yeah, that's the one you want. Dragons, at the beginning of combat on each opponent's turn, tap target creature that player's controls. So, as you can imagine in this deck, you're pretty much always choosing Khans, and each combat, you're getting two plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. Seems pretty good to me. Now we have Renegade Crassus. So this is something that the Simic have come up with. It's one green green for a 3-2. It's a beast mutant. What's it doing? It's evolving. So how Evolve works is whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if that creature has greater power or toughness than this creature, so if it's a 4-1, this happens. If it's a 1-3, then this happens. You put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature, so on Renegade Krasis. And then whenever it evolves, you also put a plus one, plus one counter on each other creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. So it's somewhat conditional, it's only putting counters on the things that already have counters, but hopefully that should be most of your board. Um, but this can be quite good, particularly if you get it out early game. If you get it out late game, it's not quite as good, but can still be pretty handy. Ah, here's a really nice one. This is just a really nice toolbox card, Life Crafter's Bestiary. Three mana for an artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, scry one. That's just a nice value there. And then whenever you cast a creature spell, you may pay green. If you do, draw a card. That's just really nice. It's like if if all your creatures basically cost one more mana, but also say, draw a card on them, which is just some, some great value. Um, and you're not going to be able to do it all the time, but when you can, it's just really good. Um, here we have another of our Outlast ones. So the Outlast ones are from Khan's Block, by the way. This is Anok Bonkin. For 1 and a white, you get a 2-1 Hound Soldier. Has Outlast for 1 and a white, so it costs a little bit more than our other one. Um, but it says each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has First Strike. Again, really helpful. Really handy ability to have, particularly when you've got some bigger creatures happening with all those plus one, plus one counters. It gets a little bit crazy. We've got another Ajani here. It's our green white Ajani. It's Ajani Unyielding. So this is a pretty big one. Four green and a white for a four loyalty Planeswalker. He's plus two. Reveal the top three cards of your library. Put all non-land permanent cards revealed this way into your hand. And the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. He's minus two. Exile target creature. Its controller gains life equal to its power. So I believe that's Return return to Exile or something like that. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. And then his minus nine, which usually isn't happening, but it's there. Put five plus one plus one counters on each creature you control and five loyalty counters on each other planeswalker you control. So if you can get there, you're pretty much winning the game, but I've never seen it activated before. His first ability is just, again, really nice at getting you those cards that you need. And his second ability just gets rid of some um, some troublesome stuff that other people have. So that can be really nice. Okay. 
the next one. Oh, this is a really nice removal spell for that that works really well with de this deck. So Death's Presence, five and a green, four an enchantment. Oh, sorry, not a removal spell. Whenever your creature you control dies, put X plus one plus one counters on target creature you control, where X is the power of the creature that died. So again, like I was saying before, when when stuff you control dies, whether it's from target removal or from board wipes, though this is obviously not going to work well in a board wipe unless you've got indestructible creatures, um, you can lose a lot of synergy and a lot of value um, but this is making sure that you're not losing all of that value and you're gaining some of that back in those plus one plus one counters that are being distributed among creatures you, that you control, which is pretty great. Sorry, on target creature, that is not on creatures, um, but still pretty great. This one is just an absolute powerhouse in this deck. So I'll tell you how it works. Three white, 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 admonition angel, six, six, it's an angel with flying. And again, we see that landfall ability. So remember, our commander is getting that landfall ability activated most turns, sometimes multiple times a turn. And the landfall ability is, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may exile target non-land permanent other than Admonition Angel. But when she leaves the battlefield, return them all to the battlefield under their owner's control. So they're exiled as long as she's around. And you can be doing that potentially a couple of times a turn, which is really crazy and gets rid of your opponent's boards really quickly. So this this is just really good if you can stick around for a little while. Um, but do remember that Karametra's ability is a cast trio, not an enter the battlefield trio, which means that you do not get the landfall ability when this is cast. Um, but you get it every time after that that you do play a land. So if you do have a spare land for after this is played, you can get it on the turn that it comes out, which is nice if you can manage to set it up like that. We're getting through the deck. Our next one is Battlefront, Battlefront Crushock. It's four and a green for a 3-4 beast. It can't be blocked by more than one creature. And each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it also cannot be blocked by more than one creature, which often means that whatever blocks it is going to be dying because the creatures get pretty big with those plus one plus one counters, or it just means that they, they can't be blocked by what people have. Here we do have a removal spell. I don't have a lot of removal in this deck, but I do have some. This is, I think, one of the only board wipes in the deck. So it's three white white for a sorcery, destroy all creatures, you gain one life, for each creature destroyed this way. Again, there's some incidental life gain there. This is just a really nice board wipe that I think is quite good and not played perhaps as much as it should be. Oh, forgotten ancient. <laughs> so this is three in a green and the, the name is a little bit funny because it if, if people forget about it, it gets big. So it's an elemental, it's a zero three and whenever a player, any player, Cast a spell, you may put a plus one plus one counter on Forgotten Ancient. So for every spell cast by anyone, this gets a plus one plus one counter. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, you may move any number of plus one plus one counters from Forgotten Ancient onto other creatures. So any other creatures, you can you can just move them off of this guy onto anyone else. Um, or you can just leave this guy as a massive beta if you want to. Um, which is also a legitimate way of using him. But yeah, he can just get really, really big if people forget about him. Um, this is a really nice politics card. Selvala's Stampede. Four green green for a sorcery. This is the one that says Council's Dilemma. So starting with you, each player votes for wild or free. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal the creature card for each wild vote and put those creature cards onto the battlefield, then shuffle the rest into your library. And for each free vote, you may put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. So say we're in a four player game, and I choose wild, and the next person chooses free, and the next person chooses free, and the next person chooses wild. So that means that I'm 
revealing cards from the top of my library until I get two creature cards, and then putting those onto the battlefield. And then I'm also able to put two permanents from my hand onto the battlefield for free. Note that um, the wild ones um, are specifically creature, whereas free is permanent, not just creature. So you can do some interesting things with that one, and that's a little bit of a game as to whether you've got the stuff in your hand or not, and what people are more scared of. But that one can obviously do some really good work, and obviously a lot better the more opponents you have. Here we have Fungal Behemoth. So it's three and a green for a star star fungus, and its power and toughness are each equal to the number of plus one plus one counters on creatures you control. So obviously this creature is better the later in the game you cast it. It also has Suspend X for X green green, and X can't be zero. So how Suspend works is it basically goes off into exile with a number of time counters on it equal to X, and you remove a time counter from it at the beginning of each upkeep, and when the last one is removed, it comes onto the battlefield. And then it says, whenever a time counter is removed from Fungal Behemoth while it's removed from the game, you may put a plus one plus one counter on Tug Creature. So if you get this one early, what you can do is you can pay X green green, put however much mana you can into it, and then each turn, while you're removing the time counters from it, you're also putting plus one plus one counters onto your creatures, which is quite nice. Um, but yeah, he can be quite big, like game. Ah, uh, this one's just a really nice one. Fido Hydra. Um, so at one point I was looking at doing a deck with all the Hydras, and at one point um, there was only green and red Hydras except for this one, <laughs> which was a green-white Hydra. So two green, white, white for a 1-1 one, one plant Hydra. Seems a pretty steep cost, but then it says... If damage would be dealt to Phytohydra, put that many plus one plus one counters on it instead. Now that instead work is very important because it does not have to survive the damage. It's saying that no damage is dealt to it and instead you put plus one plus one counters on it. So this card is really crazy if it sticks around. You just block with it and you just block the biggest thing you can with it, and however much damage is dealt to it, as long as it's not trampled, because if it's trampled, then only one damage is dealt to it, and then it tramples over. Um, but say it blocks a 10-10, then guess what? 10 plus 1 plus 1 counters are going on the Fido Hydra, and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, yeah, it's a crazy blocker. Um, or a crazy attacker. Really depends on how you want to use it. And next one is Fragmentize. It's one white. Destroy target artifact or enchantment with converted mana cost four or less. It's just some handy removal um, for getting rid of little bits and pieces that are annoying. Then we have another outlast creature. So this one is Abzan Battle Priest for three and a white for a three two human cleric. Outlast again for this time for only for one white. And each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has lifelink. And again, when you're getting some big creatures with those plus one plus one counters on them and they all have lifelink, that's getting you a lot of life very quickly. So that incidental life gain is adding up to quite a bit. I have a couple of the Oaths in this deck. So Oath of Gideon, two and a white for a legendary enchantment. And when it enters the battlefield, you put two 1-1 one, one white core ally creature tokens onto the battlefield. And then each Planeswalker you control enters the battlefield with an additional loyalty counter on it. So a little bit of Planeswalker synergy, because I do have, um, I think about 7 or 8 maybe in the deck. So just a little bit of synergy there, and a little bit of value. So I could probably take that out for something else, um, but it is decent. Okay, Fangran Firstborn, 1 green, green, green. So that's a lot of green there. For a 4-2 beast... And whenever it attacks, you put a plus one, plus one counter on each attacking creature. That's, of course, including itself. Generally speaking, you're wanting 
to be able to attack in such that this lives and you can attack again with it and keep getting that trigger, which is quite nice. And next one, oh, Hardened Scales, one green for an enchantment. If you can get this down early, that is fantastic. If one or more plus one plus one counters would be placed on a creature you control, that many plus one plus one plus one counters are placed on it instead. Most of the time, this essentially doubles your counters um, because most of the time you're just putting one plus one plus one counter on all your creatures or on one creature or whatever it may be. And so this doubles that, which is really awesome. Uh, of course, it doesn't always double it. If for some reason you're putting three plus one plus one counters on a creature or four, then it just increases it by one. Um, but if you're going from one to two, this is a lot of value for just one mana. So this is really, really good. Okay, our next one. Celestial Ancient, a three white white elemental, three three with flying. Whenever you play an enchantment spell, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Now there are, are I'd say, a handful of enchantments in this deck. Not heaps, but enough for this card to be reasonable in the deck and for it to matter. And for me to go, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm fairly happy including that card in the deck. It doesn't work all the time, but when it does, it is quite nice. So this one, Crowned Keratok, three in a green, for a 4-3 Rhino with Trample. Gotta love that Rhino. And each creature you control with a plus one plus one cannon on it has Trample. Just really nice. Getting that Trample damage in, of course, is really, really good and really, really powerful. Ajani's Aid. As I said, this is a bit of an Ajani deck as well. Two green and a white for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library and or graveyard for a card named Ajani Valiant Protector. I can't remember if that's the one that I showed you before or not. Um, reveal it and put it into your hand. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. That's not the only thing it does. You can also sacrifice it and prevent all combat damage a creature of your choice would deal this turn. So essentially, it's searching for that cool planeswalker, um, but it's also potentially preventing you from some damage, which can be good. But that's also a, a probably one that performs less well, so I could probably swap it out for something else if I liked. Next, we have Heliod, God of the Sun. Three and a white for a 5-6 legendary enchantment creature god. Again, indestructible. As long as your devotion to white is less than 5, Heliod isn't a creature. And other creatures you control have Vigilance, which is very handy. And then 2 white white, put a 2-1 white cleric enchantment creature token onto the battlefield. Generally speaking, you're not using that ability. But all your creatures, except for Heliod of course, having Vigilance is just really nice. Being able to swing and still having blockers is just pretty great. Next, we have Oath of Ajani. Of course, I had to include it. Green and a white for a legendary enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Of course, I'm going to include it with that text. And Planeswalker's spells you cast cost one less to cast. Is relevant in this deck. Quite good. And next one. Oh. I love that. Thunderfoot Bailoth. Four green green for a beast. Five five with trample. And it has the ability Lieutenant. So as long as you control your commander, generally speaking you will, he gets plus two plus two. And other creatures you control get plus two plus two and have trample. Um, so generally when I was building this deck, I was trying to, um, as much as I could, only have the permanent plus one plus one counter bonuses and not other bonuses that gave plus one, plus one, or plus one, plus two, or whatever it might be, um, without the counters, just so it wasn't too difficult to try to keep track of. Um, but that is, I think, uh, that might be the only exception that I made there, um, just because that trample is quite nice. Um, here we have Anafenza, Kin's Tree Spirit. She is a white, white, for a 2-2 legendary creature, Spirit Soldier. Whenever another, another non-token creature, which effectively in this deck is every creature, so whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, bolster one. And as a reminder, bolster means choose a creature with the least creature 
toughness, sorry, among creatures you control. And because it has one, you put a plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one counter on it. <laughs> so every time you're playing a creature, one of your creatures, whichever one has least toughness, is getting a plus one plus one counter, which is just really nice. Um, this next one is Bloodspore Thrinax. It's two green and a green for a 2 2 lizard. It has Devour 1. As this enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice any number of creatures, and this creature enters the battlefield with that many plus one, plus one counters on it. And then each other creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional X plus one, plus one counters on it, where X is the number of plus one, plus one counters on Bloodspore Thrinax. So, you can use the Devour ability um, to sacrifice creatures and get plus one counters on him, or you can just rely on the other methods in this deck to get the plus one, plus one counters on him. And suddenly, every other creature you're playing has that same number of plus one, plus one counters on it. It's pretty crazy if you can make that work, which often you can. Um, Sol Ring. Yep, Sol Ring's in there. Ah, oh, Amiria Shepherd, another great landfall ability. So Amiria Shepherd is five white white, so one of the more expensive creatures in the deck for a four four angel with flying landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may return target non-land permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Important text: If that land is a plains, you may return that non-land permanent card to the battlefield instead. I will remind you that Karametra lets you search for a forest or a plains. If you have a Miria Shepherd out, guess what? You search for a plains every time. You get them back to the battlefield every time. That feels amazing. Amiria Shepherd, such a great card. If you can keep her out for a little while, some amazing value right there. Here we have Fleece Main Lion, another early game play. Green and white for a 3-3 which is just nice. And then three and a green and a white for monstrosity one. Um, if this creature isn't monstrous, put a plus one plus one counter on it and it becomes monstrous. Um, important to note that if you get a plus one plus one counter on it in some other way that does not make it monstrous. Um, so it is a bit of a steep cost, but as long as it is monstrous, it has hexproof and indestructible. So it's a nice mana sink later in the game and early in the game, it's just a nice cheaply costed creature. Here we have another nice interaction with other people on the table. Council's Judgment. One white white. Will of the Council. Starting with you, each player votes for a non-land permanent that you don't control. Exile each permanent with the most votes or tied for most votes. So Essentially, this card is removing whatever the board thinks is the worst thing on the board that isn't yours, which is pretty awesome. Um, sometimes it can get rid of two things. Generally speaking, you're only getting rid of one um, because whoever the last player is has the deciding vote. Um, usually you're playing in a four-player game with Commander, um, and so... You do have the potential of two players voting one thing and two players voting another thing, but generally speaking, you're getting three and one or all four voting for one, however it may be. But this is just a really nice removal spell and a great political tool as well um, for those who do like to play with the politics. Consulate Crackdown. Now, I, I do need to give a little bit of context for this card. So when I was building this deck, um, I was playing fairly regularly against a friend who had a Brea deck with a lot of artifacts, and so I included this card. Three white white for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, exile all artifacts your opponents control until Consular Crackdown leaves the battlefield. A little bit of artifact hate. Um, generally speaking, this wouldn't be in the deck, but because of the meta I was playing in, I did include it. I think it's the only specific artifact hate I have. Oh. Apart, I think I have mentioned a couple of other, other ones. The one where they enter tapped, um, and the other one that... Uh, the one white mana removal spell for artifacts and enchantments. Oh, quick drink now. 
Um, I do have another Planeswalker Synergy card here called the Gatewatch. Two and a white. Search your library for a Planeswalker card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Again, that's one that I could probably swap out for something else, but it is nice now and then. Oh, Micaeus the Lunark. This, this one can be a little bit crazy. X and a white. Uh, for a 0, zero legendary human cleric, it enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and then you can just tap him to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. Just, just, just tap him. It seems pretty good. Um, so you can build him up quite quickly. And then also, you can just tap, remove a plus 1 plus 1 counter from him, and then put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each other creature you control. So, you know, you... Um, even if you just do x equal to 1 or 2 or something like that, you can, you know, tap him next turn, remove one of those plus 1 plus 1 counters, and you're putting a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each other creature you control, which can be pretty crazy, um, particularly if he sticks around for a little bit, and you can do that a couple of times. Solidarity of Heroes. It's got a Johnny on it, so, you know, in theme. 1 and a green for an instant. It has Strive. So it usually only targets one thing, but it says it costs one and a green more to cast for each target beyond the first. So you can just target one thing for one and a green, or if you want to target more things, you pay another one and a green for each thing that you want to target, um, which is a little bit confusing with how it is then worded next, because it says choose any number, um, but you need to remember when you are reading that, that for each one that you are going to target, you are going to need to pay an additional one and a green. So choose any number of target creatures, double the number of plus one, plus one counters on each of them. So essentially, this is pay two mana, double the number of plus one, plus one counters on one creature that you control, or you can pay more mana and double the number of plus one, plus one counters on more creatures you control if you've got the mana for that, which you can have in this deck fairly easily. Um, we have another Oath, Oath of Nyssa. So this is just one green for a legendary enchantment. When it ends the battlefield, look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a creature, land, or planeswalker card from among them, put them into your hand, put it, sorry, into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast planeswalker spells. So just a nice little card to play early, if you get it in your opening hand, um, a little bit of value can be handy. Um, this is a nice one, Long Shot Squad, three in a green for a 3-3 three, three Hound Archer, has Outlast one in a green, and each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has Reach to take care of those flies that you do come up against now and then. We do have a few flies in the deck, but not heaps, um, so having some answers for that is nice um, and we I don't think we really have any others with reach in the deck so that is nice having some answers for that here ah this is the valiant protector one so this is the one that the other card would have searched for so four green and white Ajani valiant protector four loyalty planeswalker Ajani plus two put two plus one plus one counters on up to one target creature so usually that's what you're doing out of the gate um, or plus one, so he's got two plus abilities, which is really nice. So plus one, reveal cards, and it's getting a bit darker, reveal cards from the top of your library until, until you reveal a creature card, put that card into your hand and the rest onto the bottom of your library. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. And then here's minus 11, put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature where X is your life total. That creature gains trample until end of turn. Um, usually you're not getting to there, but he does have two plus abilities, so he can get quite good quite quickly. And our last creature is Arbor Colossus. Would have been funny if Forgotten Ancient was the last creature, that would have been quite funny. Two green, green, green for a 6-6 six, six creature giant. So five mana for a 6-6 six, six giant with reach. There we go, we've got one with reach. Um, three green, 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 monstrosity three. Um, so again, if this creature isn't monstrous, put instead this time three plus one, plus one counters on it, 
and it becomes monstrous. And when it does become monstrous, destroy target creature with flying and opponent controls. So just a bit of removal, but also a really nice big card. Um, and again, some thing there to deal with flying. So that is my deck tech for my green-white plus one plus one counters. Some Ajani synergies, um, my Karametra deck. It is the second deck that I built and I really do enjoy playing with it. It can be quite powerful. Um, it's not certainly not on a 9 or 10 power level. This is more like a 6 or 7 power level. But I do really enjoy playing it. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, let me know and I'll do more content like this. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.